Um, welcome to a fairy tale talk. So uh, it's hard to see, but uh, you can just interrupt me anytime to ask questions, so you don't need to wait until the end. So the talk about will be Android and the Seven Dwarfs. Uh, anybody just care to uh, read the abstract or just came for the catchy title? Um, okay, basically the uh, dwarves are um, topics which Android needs some help. So I'll have seven topics, but more than uh, seven libraries to solve the problems. Who am I? I'm a Java Android web developer. I'm currently working in Intel, although uh, today my talk is uh, nothing to do with my daily job. Um, I try to attend conferences and give talks. Um, I happen to write a, a book, but actually it's a Java E book, so not sure if anybody will be interested in, in this room. I'm a Java champion and a Google developer expert on Android. So if you're still interested in the book, there's a discount code. And let's start the real session. So once upon a time, <laughs> we should start like this, so since we have the title. We had the princess, well, actually the android, and um, andro uh, our little android had some problems after eating the apple. Um, instead of waiting the prince charming, let's try to see if uh, seven dwarfs can help. So, uh, as I mentioned before, I'll, I, because I had too many libraries, I still try to uh, keep them in seven main topics, uh, which each dwarf will be uh, hosting one. Uh, so, I'll be covering some libraries which will help your daily uh, development cycle in, on Android. Let's start with Butter Knife. Um, Actually, that's the uh, library which I needed to update my slides most lately. Uh, there has been some change uh, from version 6 to 7. Uh, basically, it's a dependence injection uh, for views and actions. So it creates much cleaner code. Uh, it's very easy to use via annotations. So if you are coming from a Java background, everything looks uh, similar. Um, you can have exceptions if, uh, uh, if a field which you want to inject doesn't actually have a corresponding XML part, which used to be shown with the, uh, which used to be uh, sold with the optional uh, annotation, but which is changed to nullable now. So you need to use the nullable annotation to avoid the exceptions. And uh, it's uh, actually uh, com uh, generating code uh, at the compile time, so not really doing any fancy reflection stuff, which would probably slow down the application. Uh, so I'm mostly using the examples from the um, project websites. Uh, so if you're just interested in one, you can just uh, go to the website of the project and uh, continue from there. So it won't be uh, changing the example topic or style. Uh, those are the basic examples given on the uh, websites of the project. So as you can see in the example, uh, we are using the bind annotation to bind the XML XML field to the Java field. Uh, so instead of using find view by IDs, we can just inject the uh, view fields into our activity and start uh, working on them. The only boilerplate part is uh, just uh, calling the butter knife dot bind and passing your activity, and uh, then you're free to use the fields. Uh, before version 7, the bind annotation used to be inject, which was kind of more uh, Java way, but uh, it has been changed to bind with uh, version 7. 
Uh, one thing you need to consider is there's always a possibility that the XML doesn't really have such a field. So instead of uh, dealing with null pointers with the reused code, uh, you need to use the nullable annotation to make sure if the field is null, uh, to not get an exception if the field is null. Uh, again, if you're familiar with the older versions, this used to be optional, uh, at optional uh, annotation, but it has been changed to nullable with the version 7. Butterknife also uh, supports um, actions, so you can just add an action to a UI element, such as a button, and uh, in this one you can see adding a, a on-click event to a submit button, and you can also add multiple uh, one uh, action to multiple buttons, such as in the uh, second example, I'm adding uh, three buttons to just one listener, which will handle uh, any of the clicks on those three. By the way, I have some marshmallows if you have any questions. So it used to be easier with the lollipops. I can just throw away, but yeah. <laughs> so um, once you put a library inside your project, most of the time you end up with some ProGuard problems. So um, this also, this also uh, uh, Butterknife also introduces some problems with ProGuard, so you need to do the following to make uh, Butterknife work nice with ProGuard, or the other way. So, uh, basically Butterknife just uh, gives you injection for the views, and you can easily use the uh, views you declared in the XML file inside Java. Um, another framework which does almost the same job is Dagger. It's, uh, again, dependency injection. It's based on javax.inject, so it can be more familiar if you're coming from the Java background. It lets you make your uh, test your code easily. Um, once again, this also doesn't really uh, do any reflection. It's uh, compile time code generation. It's kind of a bit more complicated than Butterknife. And uh, it might be hard to integrate Dagger into an ongoing project, unlike Butterknife, which is uh, cleaner in terms of integration. So for Dagger, um, you have three concepts. One is module uh, and provides, uh, which is a mechanism to uh, provide the dependencies. Uh, works like the factories and produces the resources. The other concept is the inject, which is the mechanism for requesting the dependencies, uh, basically declaring that uh, this part needs the uh, produced uh, dependency. And the final concept is the component, which actually acts as a bridge between modules and uh, injections. So once again, this example is from the website of the project. We have a coffee maker which is um, expecting to have a heater and pump. Uh, the heater and pump is produced by the module which provides the heater and the pump. And um, those are bind together uh, via the component coffee shop, which uh, has the coffee maker and knows which module will inject the resources into the coffee maker. So this is a very basic example of Dagger. And uh, these are the interfaces which uh, you may need to uh, uh, deal up with uh, when you work with Dagger. The nice thing about Dagger is um, also uh, you can use the qualifiers, uh, the named annotation for uh, injection. Uh, the, may, uh, the nice part of Dagger is it doesn't really need any ProGuard configuration, so you just drop in the dependency and uh, start developing and not really do anything fancy with ProGuard. 
Next topic, networks. And um, well, anybody, if did any network code on Android, we all know that HTTP client is not really doing well. So most of the time we need to work with some third party libraries. And one of the most popular uh, network library is OKHttp. Okay, it's widely used. Uh, it's a simple fix for HTTP client. Uh, it uh, offers its own internal cache. So unless your cache is not expired, it doesn't really go back to the backend and uses the internal cache instead of uh, hitting the network each time. Uh, it supports HTTP2 and CPD, which is, again, a good point. Um, it internally uses gzip uh, without really uh, you to do some custom coding. And um, you have uh, manual control on the background execution. So uh, you, uh, by the way, each slide has the uh, dependency uh, which you need to add to the Gradle file just to use the library. So uh, once you add those, it should be just working fine. If we just check the example of OKHttp, okay, uh, you just create a client, then uh, build your request using the request builder, then uh, just uh, create a uh, call and execute. This will return you a response, which is actually HTTP response. So you can just uh, get, uh, request the body and get the uh, response from the uh, as a string or uh, whatever resource you are expecting from the URL. Um, it. If you need to do a post, uh, once again, you uh, have your JSON and uh, you create your request. Uh, then uh, once again, using the request builder, you post your JSON and uh, execute the call, which will again uh, return you the response. By the way, the response object is uh, kind of uh, holding all the HTTP data you're expecting, so you can check the status codes or uh, just anything you're, uh, you will be dealing with any HTTP call. Uh, on the ProGuard side, you need to do some configuration to make it work with OKHTTP. Okay uh, so uh, it's mostly internal classes and uh, interfaces which OKHttp OK is uh, introducing and also uh, some uh, warnings. So once you have this basic ProGuard configuration, most of the time you don't really have any problem with OKHttp. OK uh, the nice thing about OKHttp OK is the um, Development is pretty active and many people are using it, so you can come across many Stack Overflow uh, responses and, and uh, the uh, website is also very active. The other uh, networking library is Wally, which I really enjoy using and it's actually referred in the developer.android.com, so it's kind of an uh, official third-party library but it hasn't been updated uh, for a long time and uh, it doesn't actually even have an official uh, grad Gradle dependency. So the uh, line below is just an um, unofficial uh, Gradle uh, build, which you can just add to your Gradle file and uh, use it as a uh, library. But uh, if you just uh, don't, if you just want to use the official way, you need to uh, download the source and add the whole source code to your project. If you check the uh, example code, it's it's pretty easy to use Wally. Uh, you just uh, cre create a new request queue and then uh, create your requests. Requests are uh, pretty uh, simple Java snippets, which has uh, a response and error listener. So uh, as you expect, if you have a uh, 
proper response from the backend. The on response method will be called with the string of response. And if you happen to have any error, then the error li listener will be triggered. Uh, the nice thing about Wally is, once again, it uses an internal cache, so unless your cache is not expired, you don't really need to hit the network and uh, um, query the backend. And if any time you need to cancel the request, uh, uh, you can just uh, ask the queue to cancel all tasks you submitted, and uh, as seen in the uh, last line, and it will stop the execution of the uh, HTTP requests. And uh, it doesn't really need any ProGuard configuration, which is also nice. Next, we have Retrofit. Uh, by the way, any questions so far? Good, no marshmallows. Uh, Retrofit is a REST client for Java. Uh, basically, it generates an implementation of the uh, REST API, which is exposed to the clients. Um, nice thing is it uses annotations to describe URLs, query parameters, so it's pretty uh, easy and nice to use. Um, uh, it, you, uh, it has support for object co uh, conversation to JSON, request body. Uh, it supports multi-part request body and file upload, which is again not uh, available in all versions of HTTP client. And uh, basically it's used for REST API, so if you're uh, planning to do something else than REST calls, it might not be the library you're looking for. Uh, the current version, the examples I'm, I'm going to show is based on 1.9. Uh, there's uh, version 2 in be beta available. Um, to use um, Retrofit, first you need to create an interface with the uh, URLs you're going to uh, request the uh, uh, resources. So once again, this is the example from the website. Uh, you have the, we have the uh, get request and the post. Uh, the get request will get the user repos and the post will create a new user. Uh, once we have the interface, we just create a REST adapter with the URL and then um, just call the uh, methods which we provided in the interface um, to query the uh, REST service. Uh, it's pretty easy to create those boilerplate codes. It's not much and uh, usually since it's uh, mostly kept in one place, it's very easy to tweak if your backend service is subject to change. Um, Retrofit needs some uh, configuration for the um, ProGuard to work fine with uh, the compilation and the ProGuard. Uh, so you need to add the following to make the ProGuard work with Retrofit. Next topic are the event buses. So uh, if you have done any development or programming with um, um, some functional and event-based languages. Uh, you probably enjoy doing that, which uh, Android and Java is kind of not really working in that way. So uh, this might be one of my favorite libraries. I tend to use even uh, Green Robot Event Bus almost in uh, all projects. Uh, I'm allowed to. <laughs> uh, basically, it, it dispatches events through a bus, which uh, subscribers uh, can just uh, notify it when an event is fired. It's event-driven and uh, very, very easy and clean uh, to uh, integrate and implement. Uh, it easily transfers data between components from um, uh, activity to activity or fragment service. You can just uh, transfer any data between any, any component. Uh, and it uses reflection on the runtime. So to use the uh, green bus, uh, you need to 
create custom events for your um, events. Uh, so here is a sample event from the sample uh, code from the website. We have a sample event which carries some data, which is a string in this case. And uh, you can create a um, constructor to easily create the event and fire it in one liner. So when you want to fire this event, when something is triggered, uh, you just uh, get the instance of the event bus and post your event to the event bus. That's it, and the event bus will take care of the uh, whole mechanism to um, deliver your event. So how are we going to subscribe? Uh, it's, again, pretty easy. Uh, the classes which want to uh, listen for the event, uh, register themselves to the event bus. Then they need to implement a method called on event with the event type of uh, your event. So in this case, we have the sample event. Uh, so we have an on event which expects a sample event uh, which uh, will be uh, sent by the event bus. So uh, that's mostly it. You can have uh, multiple on event uh, methods on a on the same class as long as you have different uh, event types, and um, the event pass will figure out which one to be called. Um, Green bus needs some ProGuard configuration, and uh, since it works with reflection, it definitely needs to keep the on event name. Uh, so um, you need to add the following to make sure it works with the ProGuard. Another alternative event bus is Otto, which is again very popular. Um, Mostly all event buses uh, help you to decouple your components or parts of your application. So Otto does the same. Um, and it also, again, uses the reflection uh, to figure out to which uh, part of the code will be uh, triggered. Using Otto is also pretty simple. Uh, you just uh, create a new bus and post your event to the bus. And uh, once again, you need to register your bus. Uh, with Auto, you are free with the uh, method names. So you can just um, create any method name, but you need to annotate it with subscribe. So any method uh, annotated with subscribe and um, expecting a parameter of your event type will be automatically triggered by Otto. And um, once again, you can pass any data inside your event. Of course, Otto also needs some ProGuard configuration to make it work um, after the obfuscation. Next, from the creators of Green Robot, Event pass. Uh, there is Green DAO. Um, it uses the standard standard SQLite, uh, but you don't really need to deal with creating tables or uh, manual SQL, SQL queries. Uh, it uses code generation for the model and the DAO, so no reflection ma magic, and um, uh, you just need to add a step uh, to the compiler. Uh, the code sample is pretty easy. Uh, you just create a, a helper and uh, uh, declare your table name. Then the, uh, the uh, DAO helper will create, uh, you can create the, the session uh, from the DAO helper and uh, query the uh, model or just save a new one or just delete. It's uh, pretty easy. The uh, model here is also created by the um, by the uh, Green DAO depend uh, uh, library. So uh, you, the model object uh, and the DEO is created for you, and uh, you can easily interact with them to uh, make the database queries. 
Of course, again, it needs some um, uh, ProGuard configuration. Uh, basically, uh, it needs to keep the abstract DAO uh, the same way it is, and uh, also the table name. So uh, it's not a lot of configuration, but you need to keep those in basic to make the uh, green DAO work. Another database helper is Schematic, uh, which um, automatically generate the uh, content providers. It's once again backed by SQLite. Um, the nice thing is it can be used with the Android system. So it works well with the loaders, sync adapters, and permissions. Um, but it's kind of harder to use uh, because you need to deal with the cursors explicitly. So um, here's what you need to do. It is, again, this is the sample from the website. Uh, you create an interface which uh, reflects your table, uh, actually the data in your table. Then uh, you can uh, just uh, use the, uh, you can just query and uh, interact with the database the way you want. The nice thing about um, Schematic is actually it doesn't really need any ProGuard configuration, so you can just drop in the dependency and start working with it. Next, uh, job queue. Uh, this, uh, this is again another um, very active uh, library. It used to be pretty active, then the development stopped and moved to another Git repository, and now uh, the activity looks like resumed back. Um, I used this one in a project a while ago for a very different reason than, because this is also uh, most of the time um, uh, for orchestrating the web requests, but I did something totally different to just uh, give prior, uh, priority to tasks and orchestrate them. Um, that time I had some difficulties because the library looked like not really maintained anymore, but uh, the activity resumed, so I didn't really want to take it all, uh, off the slides. It's a persistent queue, so uh, it's really nice to schedule some jobs and prioritize them, and uh, you don't care if your application uh, crashes or uh, goes to sleep. Uh, each job is persistent, so uh, they can be loaded back when your uh, application is alive. It's easily, uh, it's very easy to prioritize your tasks. So a task which is created after the, uh, after another task can execute before that. Uh, you can delay the job execution, which is again a uh, good feature. And you can also group jobs, tasks to execute in batch. Um, once again, uh, although this is a very nice library um, with the version 5.0, um, you can always use the new APIs and may not really need the job queue anymore. So to use the job queue, first you need to extend the job and create your own job classes. Uh, the job classes are pretty easy. Uh, you can just uh, hold any reference of data here, and uh, but you need to make sure they, they are uh, okay with serialization because uh, all jobs need to be uh, able to uh, saved into the disk and uh, so you, it needs to be serializable. Um, there are two methods which you need to implement in every job. Uh, the, the most important one is the onRun method, which will be executed when your job is going to be uh, executed. So if you're calling a web resource or a backend service, that's the method you need to um, implement your code on. 
Um, the other two methods are on edit and should rerun on throwable. Uh, throwable. On edit is the part which will be executed when your job is added to the queue. So it's kind of an initialization code for the uh, job. And should rerun on throwable uh, is only executed if the onRun method somehow uh, got, gets an exception. The nice thing about it, it, it doesn't really need any ProGuard configuration, so just drop in the dependency and start using it. Next, we have Timber. Um, it's a small logger with uh, extensible API. The default behavior is nothing. So um, you add the behaviors using the three instances, and each install uh, initiates itself by calling the timber plant. So it actually uh, output logs and for uh, debug builds and uh, auto take generation. This is a, uh, again a, a library by Jake Wharton. So you can uh, create your own uh, logger objects by extending the tree and um, just uh, decide on the way your logger wants to work. But the basic usage is actually very simple. You just call the static method in Timber uh, with the um, um, given uh, info or error, and you pass your message to the logging uh, part. So it's pretty easy to use, and uh, it doesn't really uh, affect your uh, run um, um, non-debug build, so it only works with the debug build. And best, it doesn't really need any ProGuard configuration. One other um, logging framework is Hugo, which is I really uh, enjoy to use. It's annotation-based, and um, the nice part is it has zero effect on non-debug builds because it only uh, targets the debug builds and injects the code, generates the code for the debug builds. So uh, as I mentioned, it generates uh, code for logging and uh, basically what you need to do is at the following to the uh, Gradle, to the build script, so uh, basically it will generate the code for only the debug part. How it works, uh, you just add the debug log an annotation and uh, this method will be locked automatically in the debug mode. Uh, the uh, following lines are just an example for the uh, get name method. Uh, because it's just uh, code injection for the debug builds, it doesn't really have any uh, ProGuard configuration, and um, you can just uh, drop it in your project and start using. So, actually, we are done with the seven dwarfs. So, um, anybody has any questions so far? If not, then we can go to the bonus material with the Prince Charming. <laughs> well, we are in the uh, Java conference, so you have been listening to Lambdas and how Java 8 is great for the uh, since from the morning or since from the beginning of the week. But we don't have Java 8 on Android, right? Uh, well, technically you can install the JDK, but actually uh, you will be using it in uh, Java 7 compatibility mode just uh, for compiling the code uh, in uh, Java 7 compatibility. Uh, and because we don't uh, since we don't have Java 8, um, uh, we can't really use the Lambdas, and uh, Android doesn't really have the invoke dynamic system, so installing the Java 8 is kind of just 
for fun. You don't really make use of it. So, what can we do to solve this problem? Uh, I came across a project called Retro, Retro Lambda, which brings Lambdas to Android. Uh, you, first of all, you need to install Java 8 uh, because it will be using um, Java 8 to uh, make the Lambdas work. It has supports for the Lambda, exp lambda expressions, uh, uh, also for the method references and private uh, resources uh, statements. It offers a limited support for backporting the default methods and the static methods on interfaces. Uh, once again, this is a limited support, so um, not everything works with that, but uh, Still, uh, or even for just lambdas, it's worth for a try. Um, actually, what it does is, because the operating system does not have the invoke dynamics, uh, this library will generate the code. Uh, so it's a syntactic sugar, uh, sugar coating. It will just generate the code from uh, your Java 8 style code into Java 7. So most of the um, configuration is on the build scripts. You need to um, add the following and also the plugins, uh, or you can uh, just install the last three lines, the plugin, uh, if you're using the new, new version of Gradle, and uh, then you can start writing with uh, Java 8 style lambdas and Java 8 style code. It does need some configuration in the ProGuard because um, it's using the Java Lang invoke. And um, also because the Android Studio does not really uh, plan to use uh, version 7 with uh, version 8 with the Android, you need to add the following uh, lines to make uh, Android Studio to accept working with uh, version 8. So um, that's the basics of Retro Lambda, and I think I didn't put the web URL, but you can just Google for it, and uh, then it's pretty simple. You just uh, copy paste the Lambda codes which you have been uh, watching since morning. So that's the end of our fairy tale, and. Um, I would be glad to answer any questions if you have one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because, well, I mean, it depends on the project, but if you just, oh, sure. Let me, uh, the question was, uh, why I said uh, is, uh, Dagger is hard to integrate into an ongoing project. So uh, if you check the example, it's more like you need to do some boilerplate code and do some structuring to use the Dagger. However, um, when you compare, uh, actually they're not really comparable, but if you use butter knife or some other basic uh, dependency injection frameworks, they're just based on one annotation and it just does the magic. But Dagger offers uh, much more flexibility and much more configurability, which actually produces the boilerplate code and uh, you need to structure your project. So, which really depends on the project, but uh, you need to do some more work to integrate it to your project. So it, I'm not saying it can't be done, it's just that you need some uh, manual work to do it. Any other question? So you, don't, you probably don't need to uh, share the uh, marshmallows with anyone. Okay, thank you.